You've been able to break down your opponents fairly easily with your pace and volume of punches in the past. Do you think you're gonna have an edge in this fight, especially in the later rounds? Yeah, I would agree with that. I think uh, the longer the fight goes, uh, it'll probably go in my favor. I usually, I start a bit slow and finish each round strong and get stronger and stronger until uh, my opponent wilts away. And I, I think he'll be, he's, he's a really strong starter too, so yeah, yeah, I think that's how it's gonna go. All right, do you see just anything generally in his game? That I can exploit? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, there's certain things, I guess that's part of what my whole game plan for the last few months have been uh, built around, but um, you know, I feel like I'm a more explosive uh, competitor, but uh, yeah, we'll see on Saturday night. This question is for both Chris and Curtis. I'll ask Chris first. You guys have fought in the past, amateur days. You guys were both fairly green to the sport at that point in your career. You guys have both amassed a great record coming up to this fight, both undefeated as pros some outstanding performances. Just talk about your progression individually as yourself, not the other person, but as yourself. How have you seen yourself grow as a fighter from that fight till now? Uh, I got nothing for that. Pass. Have you, how have you seen him grow then? Um, Microphone. I, you know what, yeah, I've seen, he's gotten steadily better, I think, you know? Um, every fight he gets, you know, a lot, a lot more crisper, a lot cleaner. He, he's finishing guys quickly, and you know what? I, th I think that he's had steady progression, and I've come leaps and bounds since our last fight. Cause I was pretty new when we first fought back in 2012. I only had a couple months training. You know, I just, I was still smoking cigarettes, and you know, I never took any martial arts like wrestling or boxing, kickboxing, none of that. So, yeah, I was pretty, pretty brand new to the sport at the time, even though I had four fights. So yeah, I've come a long way since then, and so has he, so it'll be a good fight. Curtis, I guess both yourself and Chris. Yeah, I don't know, I, I agree with that. I think, um, I mean, I don't know if, if I've been steady and he's been leaps and bounds, but you know, whatever. But uh, I feel like we both definitely progressed. I, I mean, it's funny, I watched that fight back a little while ago, and you know, you can still see like the base of us is like the same kind of similar styles, but um, you know, just the, the technique, the evolution, kind of the add-ons that we've put onto our styles have, um, it's just like a whole another thing. I saw some things that I was doing and it was like almost embarrassing, like at this point now, um, that that fight was a, actually a big fight for me. Um, two fights, the two fights that I had before him, I won quickly with submissions. I kind of, and it just kind of put my mind like in the, like assuming that that's just how it would go from then on out and whatever. And so I went in a little over, um, overconfident in that aspect and um, you know when it didn't work out I was kind of surprised and then <clears throat> so since that fight I've been uh, that fight just because it didn't work out in my favor uh, it forced me really to like evaluate what I was doing with my training what um, you know what holes did I actually have that I kind of maybe was ignoring before and um, you know it's really helped me to uh, evolve since then. Curtis I know you uh, your last two performances ended uh, in not so great fashion for the other guy. Um, not really how you expected it to go down. I know you're training now, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu wise with East Van BJJ, Wally uh, over there. Just explain how that sort of aspect, cause I know your stand up was sort of your, your bread and butter. How has the ground game sort of evolved since starting with Walter? Yeah, they've, uh, they've been awesome. Their team there is um, a super strong team. I was training uh, with a kind of a smaller team before, um, you know, the coach was great as well there, but uh, the team is a little smaller. East Van, it's, it's like it's filled with beasts. <laughs> you know, I went in there and it was it was a pretty humbling experience. Um, you know, showing up and um, you know it's funny like sometimes now they like, they call me like champ or whatever and then tap me out right after. So it's it's a you know it's a funny a funny thing. But yeah, they're they're awesome. Walter's a uh, super enthusiastic um, as a coach in jujitsu and also um, even just helping out with my MMA career, which is. It's been great. It's been an awesome, uh, awesome place. Um, via your social media, I see that you post some videos. Not necessarily all videos that are just highlighting fights, but a lot of it is, you know, you walking on the beach or you in the woods and stuff like that. It seems like it's a lot of mental preparation. How much of that goes into your game for camp-wise? Um, quite a bit, actually. Uh, I, I like to spend a lot of time in the woods, like by myself. It's like, it's cold. Uh, 
you know, you get lonely, it, uh, and, and it opens the mind to like new thinking, you know what I mean? And there's no distractions out there, you know, maybe some birds or something, but yeah, yeah, I, I do a lot of that, because we can all train hard, you know, everyone's got the skills nowadays, and but you need that, that mental edge, I think, to, uh, to really be good. Curtis has mentioned in previous interviews that he feels he's a pretty complete fighter, pretty well-rounded, but just hasn't had a chance to display his stand-up skills in some of his fights. Uh, do you think there's a chance that he'll stand with you in this fight? Yeah, because I'm going to make him. And uh, yeah, I think, sure, you know, it's an MMA fight. Of course he's going to strike, he trains striking. But he's going to look, you know what, I think both of us, the trick's going to be is when one's, you got you to gotta make the one guy think that you're going to wrestle, but you're coming to strike. And whoever can keep the other guy off his toes is most likely going to get off the first punch and, you know, might lead to a victory. Because once you start falling behind, it's going to be pretty hard to catch up. Is there any bad blood between you guys? Because, I mean, you guys both seem pretty composed with each other. And leading up to this fight, do you need to sort of mentally create that bad blood to get inside the cage against each other? No, you know what? I, I learned you don't gotta you don't got to do that. You don't got to make things tense at the weigh-ins. You don't got to... You know, talk trash and none of that stuff. It's uh, it's a competition. You know, it's uh, yeah. I think he's a good guy. Curtis. Yeah, same. I mean, I think um, you know, our our way in for our first fight, we had a little confrontation or whatever. But I mean, we both we both kind of said. I, it. I was we dealing with some outside stuff when I was a little grumpy and decided to take it out on you. Yeah. So I mean, you know, we've we've I think we've grown since then, and you know, it's the same thing as far as I'm concerned in this sport. It's it's a sport and, you know, I think most people, when they think of punching and kicking people, they couldn't do it unless they're mad or something. It's like an emotional thing or whatever. But, uh, you know, to me, emotions removed. It's just, this is a business and, you know, this is what we do. So nothing, nothing against them, but we're going to fight. Okay. How important is the mental game during the fight? Like, like is that something you, you think about leading up to a fight where you might be able to... Uh, I don't know, forcing to quit is a little bit strong, but you know what, just just win some little mental battles during the fight. Is, is, is that a, an aspect that you think about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, planting doubt um, in your opponent can, um, you know, make them kind of, maybe when they physically could, you know, act like they couldn't or something like that. Um, as far as is that going to happen with him, you know, that's that's up to him, that's out of my control, but you know, I'm going to be putting the pressure on, I'm going to be planting the seeds of doubt and, you know, we'll see how he handles it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's a huge, it's a huge mm -hmm. factor. This is the number one ranked matchup uh, across Canada. It's, it's been put out there by media. Uh, you don't often see that between two guys with a combined five pro fights. Uh, how how important is it to you that people inside the sport recognize your potential and that you're finally getting some of that well-deserved props from not just here in BC or even in the lower mainland, but 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 all across Canada? Um, yeah, it don't matter one bit. I'm not I'm not astonished by the lights or the cameras or or the rankings or none of that stuff. I uh, yeah, I got my own reasons for doing this, and I'm not. Yeah, it's definitely not the camera and the lights and all that kind of stuff. You know, that's all just. Uh, Tricks and mirrors, I guess, I don't know, it's nothing.